Hey guys, it's your Mo the Science Guy here, back with the second part of the video. And I want to start by saying off that in experiments, there are human errors. Um, in chemistry, there's something called a theoretical yield and an actual yield when you use when you mix the reactants to create the product. Uh, there is a theoretical yield of what you should produce, a react, and then there's an actual yield of what you actually produce, and then there's a percent margin of error. In our per experiment, we are going to calculate um, a little bit of error because if you watch in the video, you can hear me click the stopwatch before the sound of the tennis ball, and you can tell by a couple milliseconds I stopped the time. So I'm going to run this, we're going to figure this out, um, and then we're going to actually take what is known in physics as gravity, the acceleration of gravity, and we're going to run that experiment, and we're going to see a little bit of a difference. But that's good because it's all, that gives us practice to use these formulas and also lets us see how much of an error um, the experiment ran. So first, um, what you have over here is called a booking. My physics teacher taught me that, and math teacher, all science and math teachers taught me that being organized is very important in, in science and math. Um, you want to be accurate and you want to know your data correctly. So in this booking, we have our five variables that are used in the formulas. And the first one I have labeled is distance or displacement. Um, it's in 160 inches is what we measured out there, but everything in science in the world is in a metric system. So I'm gonna show you how to calculate, but I also have the unit of conversion right here. One meter equals 39.37 inches. Next what we know is our initial velocity, our initial speed is zero meters per second. And it's in meters per second because you can see distance divided by time, which creates meters divided by seconds. And like I said again, we're using meters because of the metric system and it's a lot easier than, or it's what the rest of the world it uses. So uh, that being said, um, we will also take our time, our three times, and we are going to average them to get our actual time we use in these formulas. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to convert inches to meters. So what you do is you have your inches, and you have it over one unit. You cross multiply with version of how many units of, of inches on the bottom and right here so you see I have the 116 inches we measure we cross multiply we want meters that's what you put on top and you put the measurement of how many one of those is on the bottom there and these inches cancel out the one crosses over these multiply over so essentially you're just getting 160 divided by 39.37 and that will give us our meters I will show you real quick on the computer or my calculator I should say 160 divided by 39.37 oops apologize for that 39.37 and we get 4.064 and we're gonna take it to the thousandths place so we round at the thousands, and as you can see, I got 4.064 meters there. So, next, we're going to take our time, and we're going to average our time. And the reason why I'm taking it to a thousands place is, is it's more accurate, but um, in science, it's usually three sig figs, which means the hundreds place is usually uh, equitable. Um, so, for the average, time we this is what we're going to do we add the number of or we add the terms of times above and then we divide it by the number of terms we have on the top and that's how you take the average of anything so in essence I have I love seconds with them so you know that what's left um, is going to be in seconds. Um, so we're going to add this time up and then we are going to divide it by three because that's how many we have, terms we have. So we're going to clear this out. We're going to do 0.87 
plus plus and then we're going to divide that by 3 we get 86 3, 3, 3, 3 repeating and we're going to round to the thousands so our time is 0 0.863 seconds voila now We're going to go ahead and calculate our final velocity and our acceleration. Get rid of this. Get rid of this. We already know this. We can get rid of that too. Right. So, so these formulas are useful because. In physics, the goal is to use a formula that is only missing one of these variables. So for instance, uh, we want to find final velocity. Formula 3 shows us that we don't have final velocity and we don't have acceleration. So you cannot use formula 3 because we have two unknowns. We are looking for a formula where we only have one unknown variable. So let's move on. Formula 4, we cannot use because it has a final velocity and an acceleration. Um, formula 5, we could actually figure out acceleration. And then from figuring out acceleration, we can use acceler uh, formula 3 or 4 to figure out the final velocity. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So. kind of funny because I chose the formula that, that probably has the most amount of work in it. The formula says that it's distance or displacement is 4.064 meters equals initial velocity times time which is 0 0.863 seconds plus one half acceleration zero point eight uh, I'm gonna run out of room maybe okay barely fit it let me scoot this up so you see it so we have our distance or displacement four point zero six four meters equals our initial velocity times our time which initial velocity is zero times our time 0 0.863 seconds plus one half times the acceleration which is our only unknown in this times our time 0 0.863 seconds squared so we're going to go ahead and simplify this because we know this cancels out right here zero times anything is zero so what we're left is 4.064 meters equals one half acceleration of 0 0.863 seconds squared. Okay. All right, so next we're going to take our time and we're gonna simplify actually this whole part right here. All right, so we're gonna take our time and square it. So, trust the calculator here. get 0 0.863 squared, right? So now we have one half acceleration times 0 0.744. We're gonna round up the thousands, I said, so we're gonna actually Four five, zero point seven four five seconds squared. So the number squared and our units is squared there, and that all equals four point zero six four meters. Great. Now we can take this one half, and we can multiply it to a and to time. 
Um, you're not distributing, all these three are being multiplied. So once you multiply this to that, it gets rid of the half and you're left with a times that times second squared. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply one half by that, which is the same as multiplying it by 0.5 times 0.5. Oh, apologize for that again. I keep bringing out my notepad. So, you're left with acceleration times three, I'm sorry, 0 0.3. 0 0.3, two. And we're gonna keep it as a two because it rounds down. 4.064 meters. Last but not least, we do inverse operations to get A alone to figure out A, and we divide both sides by 0 0.72 seconds squared. cancels out on that side and we are left with the drum roll please. A equals show you real quick, okay. You're left with four point zero six four divided by zero point three seven two acceleration for us is 10.925 because we're rounding. I'm sorry, 10.925 meters per second squared. I wrote it in red so it would pop out. All right, now that we have our acceleration and we've logged it in our booking, we're gonna figure out our final velocity of the ball right before it hits the ground because when it hits the ground and it settles, it stops. So the final velocity after some time would actually be zero. So we're going to use formula number three and you could use four, three, uh, you could use two. And remember, delta just means final velocity minus initial. We could have technically used formula one to find out um, the final velocity, which I'll show you how in a second. Um, so, but let's just use formula three for simplicity. So, and we, when we go back over this, I'll actually use a different formula. Um, when we use the correct uh, measurement of gravitation. So formula three tells us that its final velocity, which is our unknown, equals initial velocity, which is zero meters per second, plus acceleration, which is 10.925 meters per second squared. And notice that acceleration is meters per second squared because we had a second squared and we divided meters by the second squared. Please rewind the video if you don't remember um, that. And also, uh, YouTube has uh, an option to slow videos down. So to show my percent error in the experiment, please slow my video down and hear the beep and the balls at two separate times to know that my time is actually a little bit sooner than when I should have stopped it. Okay, so now we have that. Um, we're still using formula three and then we have acceleration right there. Now we times it by time. And our time is 0 0.863 seconds. I'm going to just leave it right there and not put parentheses over it. It still means that it's being multiplied, but I'm running out of room. I don't want to run into our booking. So this is very simple. Zero, obviously, anything plus zero is gone. There is nothing. So now we're just going to multiply these two things. Put this 
right here so you guys can see it. So we got 10.925 times 0 0.863. And our final velocity, after those are multiplied, final velocity is 9.428, and we're going to keep it an 8 because of the rounding. And this is in meters per second. As you can see, I'll show you why it's meters per second. This is meters per second squared, and this is seconds. So. We multiply meters per second squared times seconds. Dividing a variable, so this technically, let's just go ahead and do this. Let's just multiply straight across and we get meter seconds over seconds squared. Now we have a, a, a singular second up here and we have two uh, or seconds being multiplied by seconds, so that cancels out to uh, meters per second. Only one of the seconds squared remains because of the cancel outs out, so that equals that. Okay, so now we have our booking complete, and now you can say, hey, the ball was traveling at 9.428 meters per second right before it hit the ground, or hey, uh, acceleration on earth is 10.925 which it's not because we are going to use the actual measurement and calculate the rest of these numbers so I'm gonna put a separate booking down here and we're gonna keep this up here and we're gonna see how off I was we have distance our distance is gonna stay the same so I'm just gonna put that in black real quick we're not looking for the difference of that. Our initial velocity is also going to stay the same. And I'm going to give you the measurement of acceleration on Earth, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, some science teachers would tell you that that's negative. The only reason why it's negative is because you're looking at it at the y direction and we are measuring uh, negative just means negative y direction. Positive means going up um, towards the sky. And then also in, if you were to do a horizontal problem, um, if you were going forward you're, or let's say to the right, it would be positive and then going to the left backwards is negative of course you can switch which way is positive which way is negative just know that one direction is positive the other direction from your starting point is negative um, or in the case of vertical kinetics um, down is negative which gravity put, pulls things down in our perspective so I'm going to give you that in this chart right here, and I'm going to put in blue, 9.81 meters per second squared. Voila. That is Earth's gravitational pull, the acceleration of it. So you can already see that I was off by close to 1.1, a little over 1.1 meters per second squared. Let's see how far I was off with the speed and the timing using that. So, uh, real quick, uh, I'm going to show you how to use Formula One with with our actual our actual first data before we start this part. So, Formula One says the average velocity, which is v i plus v f over two, equals distance divided by time so so ma'am here we have it 
we are going to go ahead and divide 4.64 and divide it by 0 0.863 to get meter seconds. Okay, so we'll put this right here. Seven zero nine. This should be in seconds. I apologize. So we get four point seven zero nine meters per second. And then on this side we have initial velocity plus final velocity over two. We can't touch the top of the fraction bar until we get rid of the fraction bar. So this is technically in a bubble. Parentheses. And in inverse operations, we go backwards on PEMDAS. So multiply 2 to that side to get rid of the 2. So times 2. Get 9.18. Um, let me use it with our rounded number because it gave us a little bit of a more precise number. Okay, with our rounding number, it is 9.418. Is that what it was before? I apologize. It would, yeah, that's, before it was 9.428, and that's because we used our rounded numbers. If we were used more um, specific numbers by going farther down the hundreds, thousands, ten thousands place and we kept going down the past decimal place to get more accurate number, these numbers would be more accurate together. But um, since we used rounded numbers in our before problems, our numbers are slightly different, just slight in the hundreds place, which is small, but um, that is going to be your final velocity. So that's how you use formula one. Formula 2 is saying final velocity minus initial velocity over delta t. That is formula 2. Uh, if we wanted to use that, we could say take this 9.428 uh, and take the initial velocity, which is 0, and we can just say 9.428 divided by time to get our acceleration. So I can do that real quick just to show you what it gives you. I just want to go ahead and like do all the formulas. We'll use formula four for our uh, booking in the end right here. So I can show you how to do that. But for formula two, uh, we are gonna go ahead and take our final velocity minus zero, which is just our final velocity divided by our time. So it's really just our final velocity, which is 9.428. Divided by 0 0.863. Oh, I'm sorry. 0 0.863. 10 point nine two four six. We round up 10 point nine two five. There you have it. That's formula two. Now, formula four. We don't need these times anymore. Let's see using formula four, how fast the ball uh, would have been going right before it hit the ground. And then after we find formula four, let's figure out our time by using, I guess, formula two, um, since I just ran through it real quick. So formula four, I'm gonna write it. Vf squared, which is our unknown, and our known is initial velocity, which is squared. Actually, I'm sorry, I need fine tip markers. Fine tip markers would have been much better for the tutorial. 
one is whiteboard squared and then we have plus 2 times 9.81 meters per second squared times our distance which is Apologize for a little bit blurring and writing small, but as you can see, initial velocity squared plus two times our acceleration times our distance. So we know zero squared is just zero, so we're just gonna go ahead and cancel that out. Scratch. And we are just going to multiply two times 9.8 times 4.64, and I'll do that one step at a time so that you guys can see if you're getting the right numbers with me. So, 2 times 9.81, 19.62, and uh, still meters per second squared is the separation. And we're going to multiply that by, let me write it a little neater. It's kind of hard writing sideways or upside down. multiply this across um, you're going to get meters squared over second squared is our units and let's see what our number is that right there times point zero six four. all right our number 79 point seven three six because we're rounding and equals the uh, square. Okay. Oh and this is meters squared per second squared. There you go. Now we're not done. This is final velocity squared. We have to take the square root of this number, which is also going to take the square root of meters per second meters squared per second squared, which is going to give us meters per second, which is our correct measurement for velocity. So this is our drum roll. This is our final answer. So we are going to take the square root of it. 8.9294, which we're going to round, so 8.92. So our final velocity is 8.92. And as you can see, compared to our experiment, we are about 0 0.5, 0 0.5 meters per second off. Um, so, in my experiment, things are traveling a little bit faster. Um, our gravitational pull is a little bit higher. <laughs> um, now it's just because of the error of stopping the watch a, a milli a little bit of a millisecond too early or 0.5 milliseconds or let's see if I'm correct about that um so let's go ahead and calculate the time using formula 2 again so we can go ahead and write down our acceleration Nine point eight one equals final velocity eight point nine two nine minus initial velocity, which is zero, all over delta t, which is time. Voila! That is formula two written out with our known variables and the one unknown variable. So anything minus zero is zero, and we're left with. Uh, final velocity, 0.929 meters per second over delta t equals 9.81. Now, we want to get delta t alone. So we're going to multiply both sides to delta t to get rid of that fraction bar. So delta t is going to now come over on this side and it's going to multiply off this side. Inverse operations. And now we still want delta t alone, so we're going to divide 
or final velocity by our acceleration. So final velocity is 8.929 divided by our acceleration 9.81. And our time is going to equal 0 0.910 seconds. Let me show you the conversion uh, or units being. Uh, this is our final velocity right here, and we are dividing it by meters per second squared. When you divide anything, you take the fraction, you flip it, and then you multiply it so we get seconds squared on top here and meters on bottom. Meters and meters crosses out, and you're left with seconds squared on top and seconds on the bottom, which leaves us one seconds or, or seconds to the power of one on the top, which is exactly what we got for time. Voila. Okay, so now we have everything we need in our booking. Um, as you can see now, I was off um, in the time by a little less than point zero five milliseconds. Oh, I'm sorry, seconds. So really, yeah, I was off by point zero five of a second.